Now let us derive an expression for the effective capacitance of parallel combination of capacitors. Suppose we have three capacitors, let's say C1, another capacitor C2, and another capacitance C3, capacitor C3. Let's say C1, C2, C3 represents the capacitance of the capacitor. Instead of calling this as capacitor, these two, these three represents the capacitance. These are connected parallelly and is connected in between a cell of potential drop V. For convenience, let's let's name this point, this junction A and this junction B. We connected all these capacitors in between A and B. And you know the fact that this is the positive terminal and this is the negative terminal. You know the fact that for a parallel combination, since all the capacitors are connected between A and B. See, the C1 is in between A and B, C2 is between A and B, also C3 is between A and B. So the potential remains the same. So for parallel combination, potential remains the same. Since capacitance and pot capacitance are different, capacitances are different and the potential remains the same you have the equation q charge is equal to cv so definitely the charge the charges are different so this will be q1 this will be q2 and this will be q3 charge across the first second and third capacitors be q1 q2 and q3 now we have this, all these charges are provided by, are supplied by the charge of charge due to the cell. So, by conservation of charge, by conservation of charge, we know charges can neither be created nor be destroyed. So, charge supplied by the cell equal to charges across the individual capacitors, Q3. So Q is equal to, see the potential remains the same. So we have from this relation Q1 equal to C1V, Q2 equal to C2V and Q3 will be C3V. And you can write this as Q equal to V times C1 plus C2 plus C3. Let's call this as equation number 1. Now. Let me erase this. Suppose if I replace all these capacitors with a single capacitor, let's say CP of capacitance CP, and I just plug in that capacitor in between the points A and B itself that is this points A, A and B itself and connected that across the same cell of potential V. Of potential V. You know the charge supplied by the potential by the capacitor remains the same Q itself. And from this relate from this diagram you can conclude that V equal to Q is equal to charge is equal to Cp into V because we know capacitance is equal to charge is equal to capacitance into potential. So let's call this as equation number 2. See this Cp provides the same effect as that of these three capacitors because by replacing this Cp with these three capacitors the effect doesn't, doesn't change. That's, the, that's what we mean by the effective capacitance. So from 2 and 3 to 1 and 2, you can conclude that equation 2 is equal to equation 1 because both L on the left hand side, both this the charge Q. So you can write Cp into V is equal to V into C1 plus C2 plus C3. You can cancel this V so that Cp is equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3. So this is the effective capacitance of the parallel combination of capacitors.
you only need to add all these individual capacitors in order to get the effective capacitance. So if we use a capacitor with value C1 plus C2 plus C3 instead of three capac these three capacitors you have the you get the same effect. Clear. Okay.